Hey guys, so today we have a full face of Canadian makeup brands. So I just got back from seeing my best friend in Toronto and she was the one who suggested this to me. I always tease her about being Canadian. I'm always like, why would I want to try Canadian makeup brands? <laughs> But I mean, it's true, we have the best makeup brands here in the States. And I was like, okay, you know what, let's do it. So I have a feeling there will either be Americans or Canadians watching this video. I feel like as an American, you could be like, why would I need to watch a Canadian makeup brand video? I don't live in Canada, I can't buy it. Well, technically you could buy the Sephora Canadian makeup brands here in the States. And then if you're Canadian, you could be like, oh, you know what? I walk by that brand all the time at the drugstore and I never bother to think about looking at it. Maybe this video could help you look more into the drugstore brands. You know, so I feel like there could be a bit for both the Americans and Canadians watching this video. <laughs> okay, so first product, which is not makeup, but it's a sponge from the brand Quo. I mean, other than Quo, how else? would that be called, right? I'm sure it's Quo. It has a silicone surface and I feel like I've seen these everywhere. I remember seeing Real Techniques sponge like this, but it just never looked appealing to me. I was like, I want my sponge to be fully sponge. But then especially after using the House Labs foundation, which I'm gonna use again today, and I noticed that my sponge soaked up a crap ton of it because it's liquidy. I was like, yeah, that would be smart to put it on top where it couldn't be soaked up yet, spread it, and then do the padding of the sponge. So I was like, okay, now I guess I need a sponge like this. And I thought this would be a perfect way. I was reading that someone was complaining about this and then another person reviewed and was like, dude, that's a sticker. You're supposed to take it off. So let's see if that person is right. Cause I kind of feel like that is glued on there. I can see both sides. One, if it's meant to just be this red part that's acting as the holder of the foundation, then what's the point of the sticker? I'm gonna listen to that one person in the review saying you have to take this off because I do think that's weird to put this. Yeah, I, I have no idea what the need for the sticker was because if this is how you have to use it, why put a sticker there? I did not find a Canadian foundation though because in the drugstore, I couldn't test out shades. And I don't even remember seeing any drugstore foundation. And then the only one in Sephora I could test out was Ilia and they didn't have that many shades. We're just going in with House Labs again. So now after washing it, I can definitely feel the difference now. This is very squishy and you can tell this is still staying firm. So I'm just gonna pour it on directly and see if it soaks up anything. Not really soaking up, it's just staying there, okay. Let's add it to the face. Okay, you can see it did still soak it up, but it didn't get all the way in like a normal sponge. The firm is a little bit firmer than my usual sponges, but it's not the firmest out of all the ones I have. After learning about this whole idea, I think I might buy more sponges like this sponges are what I use to apply my foundation and usually with the first dab to spread it out you can see it soaking all the way into the sponge so it is smart but at the same time look it's still really soaked I thought it was just gonna like glide off there or was the other lady right and you're supposed to keep the sticker on let me know if you have this sponge let me know if you're supposed to take the sticker off or leave it on because I feel like if you're supposed to leave the sticker on then why even create a different texture of sponge when you're not even gonna use this. I just wish it was a tiny bit less firm. I want it to feel like a pillow on my face and not someone punching me. <laughs> I like the idea. It's making me want to buy the Real Techniques version of this because I have a feeling that one's better. And it actually does look like it's not absorbing too much compared to my other sponges, so that's good. I'm very curious to see how well this washes off. Okay guys, I went to wash off the Quo blender and it's washing off fine, but not the applicator where it's not supposed to soak up anything. So again, was I wrong? Was I supposed to keep that sticker on? With that logic, you could use any kind of flat paper sticker. You know what I mean? I'm trying really hard to get that off. It was easy off the actual sponge, obviously, but I don't understand. Let me know if you know. Thank you. Okay, next we are going to go in with Ilya's concealer. This one you can get at Sephora. This is the shade Chicory SC1. I don't know if it's my shade. I swatched my shades in Hourglass and Tower 20 and I swatched a bunch of Ilia concealers next to my usual shades and none of them looked anything like the shades I always use. A lot of them were really yellowy and this is yellowy, but then the lighter shade before this is like white. 
so I'm hoping that it's the right shade and it was pretty expensive. I could swear the lady said like 33 or 38 and I'm like, go in with chicory. See, that looks yellow compared to my skin. Okay, it did well. I'm glad that the shade suits me. You can't really see my dark circle that horribly here. I feel like the foundation really covered it up well. But you can see that this is brightening compared to this. Okay, I have no problem with it. I have a problem with the price though, but... No, I have no problem with it for now. Okay, it looks good. I expected worse, honestly. I'm gonna be real. I looked at all the reviews for most of the stuff that I have in this video and a lot of them were not good. I tried to get the best out of each category. Looking in the mirror, I can see that it is kind of dewy. I don't know if you can tell, you see that? You can, oh yeah, you can see it's like dewy. That's pretty. Okay, so this one I'm excited for. This is from the brand Cheekbone Beauty. It's a Native American brand but they are founded or the owners in Canada. So this is both a blush and bronzer in the shade Fair, in the shade Fair, in this little tin that you can use when you're done. A lot of the complaints on the reviews was how easy this cracks, and like crumbles and breaks, which I can see it happening. But then they say like, hey, you can just press it or grind it up into a powder blush or bronzer or something like that. So yes, that is what it looks like. These kind of combos always scare me because I always feel like I'm gonna rub into the other one. Let's tap on some of it first. Not the best blending out in the world. I like the shade, it's light, but it is a little patchy. It could be because I have breakouts here on my cheeks. I feel like there's a little bit of yellow. Why do I wanna say green? I'm less intimidated now by powder blushes because liquid and cream blushes are so intimidating and you can mess up so easily and it's really hard to clean up compared to a powder blush but i'm actually loving the blush i can live without the bronzer i've bought this honestly just for the blush i'm really loving the blush this made me realize how much i miss powder blushes because they're just easy to blend and i feel i don't know if it's because i was working on this side or what but i feel like this shade's already getting lighter like the color's already gone. That's why a lot of people like putting blush last because blush is like the first to go. I'm hoping that's not it because I was about to say I give the blush around an eight. But if it fades that fast where I'm like, wait, where did the blush go? Then I'd probably bring it down to a six. The bronzer's okay, tiny bit patchy. I love the shade of the blush and I'm hoping it stays. We will see throughout the video. Okay, so for highlight, not something I bought. I already own, which is Cover FX. Highlight in Moonlight. This is not being sold anymore last I checked, but again, I didn't just want to buy a new highlight. I was about to say, and Cover FX is a Canadian brand. I'm like, well, no duh, all of these. Everything I'm using is a Canadian brand. If that point was not made in the title or the intro, except for the House Labs Foundation. I feel like Cover FX was so good and popular back in the day. And then I'm seeing less and less products with them. I just see like the liquid highlights and that's about it, but I wish they were still in Sephora. I wish they were doing well because they just seemed like a good brand. Okay, well, damn, that was fast. We're done with face. Let's go on to the eyes. Okay, let's go in with nude sticks. This is some kind of set. This has a brow set gel, a mascara, and a luminous eye color. Okay, we have the brow set gel extra large. Okay, guessing full size. A little mini eyeshadow pencil that I'm into lately. And then the lash lengthening mascara. I looked at reviews for this package. People were mostly complaining about the mascara. It wasn't the eyeshadow. I don't think anyone was complaining about the eyeshadow. First impressions, I'm not a huge fan. I kind of want to feel it combing through my brows. Like I actually wanna see the application of the gel or the mousse, like I wanna see it there, but while I'm combing, I don't see anything happening. I don't see any color transferring. The wand feels very dry. It's giving me the same vibes as when I did my Merit Beauty video and I really didn't like their brow gel. It's giving me that vibe. 
Okay, so again, this is in the shade Nudity. It's more pinky. I feel like the champagne's kind of there or the nude, but I see lots of pink in there. I don't know if the color is too light, but I do not really see it transferring well onto my eye. Like, is it blending too much into my eye color? Does it look too much like my lid shade where you can't see it? Or is it because it's not pigmented enough? It's there, you can see the pigment, but I just feel like it's not showing up. And now I'm wondering if that's the formula or if it's just the color. Cause now I wanna test out brighter shades or more actual champagne shades and see if they pop up. You know what, let's just say it's the color for now. I will give it the benefit of the doubt. It feels like it's really poking my eye. Oh, that's probably why it's a little bit firmer than my other eyeshadow sticks because they're a lot more creamy, they're waxier, so they kind of melt onto my eye better. But since this is pokier and firmer, it's tickling my eyeball. <laughs> like I said, I'm just gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and I'm hoping it's just the shade. And if I get a better shade and like that color more, then I would say yes to this being a good product. But right now, even with it being a shimmer shade and you can see it, it's just, there's no oomph. And that's kind of what I expected, if I'm gonna be honest, with the Canadian brands. Like there wasn't gonna be lots of wow factor, if you know what I mean. I mean, we're halfway through, so who knows, maybe I'll find something I do like. So I'm gonna go back in with the bronzer. I'm gonna use that to blend in the crease. And who knows, maybe it's because I've only used Sephora Canadian brand so far, and maybe all the drugstore ones are really good, but I was still hoping. I still wanted one or two products where I'm like, yes, go Canada. But when I was Googling Canadian makeup brands, I saw a few threads on Reddit, and even there, someone was like, hey guys, I'm going to Canada, what makeup should I buy? I live in the States, blah, blah, blah. And people are like, you live in the States, you already have the best makeup. There's no reason to buy Canadian makeup. And yeah, I get that, but you know, I still wanted to try. Okay, I think I'm gonna keep it there for the eyes. Okay, now let's go in with all the drugstore brands that I got at Shoppers, Shoppers Drug Bar. So same vibes as our like CVS or Rite Aid. So we have three things left. Here we have an eyeliner and then we have a double precision liquid eyeliner and then we have lipstick and then we still have the mascara from nude sticks left okay, so let's go in with the eyeliner i'm hoping i love this this is from the brand marcel this is a double precision liquid eyeliner pen there's a felt tip and then there's a really tiny brush tip which i think is perfect because that's what i need i need a really tiny brush tip especially when i do that little cat eye right there so marcel please do your best and save everyone right now. I think so far the only things that I really like, I do like the concealer. Again, there's better. I don't like the price. I feel like I like it, but not enough for the price. And I do like the blush. I don't like the bronzer. Okay, so we have the brush tip. Oh, okay, never mind. Here's the big fat tip. And then this is supposed to be the smaller one. Oh, this whole time I thought this was gonna be like those baby micro liners, but no, they're just two different. We have a felt and then we have a brush. So, okay, should we try one on both? So we will try the brush tip on this side. I notice more on me personally that felt tip is what usually stays on my oily lids. Brush tips feel nicer, they feel softer, they feel smoother on your eyes and they're perfect for if you're covering your fake lashes. It's a little flimsier than my other brush tips and that is a big reason why I don't like brush tips is because they can get really flimsy. Like they're very easy to manipulate and like push and move around that you can mess up easier. Because like here, you know, I think I know where this brush is going, but then when I press down just a tiny bit, like it kind of flies in another direction. I'm grateful and thankful that there's actually black ink coming out because there are so many eyeliners where that just doesn't happen. The ink is horrible, no ink comes out. So yeah, right now I'm liking it so far. I think I also just have to get used to it because now I'm getting used to the firmness of this or lack of firmness. Now let's try the felt tip on this side. Like look how almost Sharpie pen level that, that is the fattest eyeliner I've ever had. Oof. Starting out not, it's too firm. It's funny because this is too firm and this is too loose. I need a balance in between the two. I feel like this is really good. Obviously you'll see like that if you want a really nice thick cat wing. See, that looks pretty. I actually really like that. And this is what I would normally go for, for just a normal swoop. 
wing. I mean, that's good. You can get two completely different styles. See, look, they look very different. And I think I'm gonna have to fill up this side with this because this is super thick compared to this. Okay, and now let's go in with a regular is this gel? Smooth liner, waterproof, long lasting. This is from the brand Annabelle. Again, this is another drugstore brand. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, very, ooh, very nice and creamy, very black. Again, I always giggle with the whole transfer proof when an eyeliner claims that because I'm like, no, don't lie. Ooh, I like that it's so smooth going on. I'm putting barely any pressure and I can tell this is gonna be easy to smudge. Usually when an eyeliner is super creamy and soft like that, they will still end up hardening. <laughs> so you still gotta blend them in time. But yeah, it's an eyeliner. I feel like so far my favorite products are the eyeliners. <laughs> okay, now let's go back in with nude sticks and their mascara. Just pulling that out and hearing how dry it was is giving me the same vibe as their eyebrow gel brush like i have a feeling it's gonna feel dry kind of not super dry at least i can see and feel the mascara coating my eyes compared to the eyebrow gel where where i didn't really see anything happening so yeah the mascara is okay nothing special i like that since this is so soft and melts really fast that this is really good for underneath. We have one last thing, and this is from Vasanti. This is their lipstick pencil, pencil sharpener included. Oh, that's good. In the shade Berry First Kiss. Of course, I got the magenta looking one. Oh, like there's an actual, actual pencil sharpener. Oh, I thought it was one of those where it's like at the end of the lipstick. Yes. I think this was the most expensive one out of the drugstore. Like I could swear it was either in the 20s or hitting 20 and I was like, oh, for a drugstore product? It's not as magenta as I would like my magentas. It's virgin on a dark red slash berry. First I was gonna say while I was putting this on, it's giving me old lady vibes, but now after looking in the camera and looking in person, it's not giving old lady vibes. Okay guys, and that is the full-ish face of Canadian makeup owned brands. I wish I did more, but I don't know. That's all I could grab within a day. If you do live in Canada, yes, you can easily go to Sephora and get better brands, but I feel like with Canadian brands, drugstore is the way to go. I love the lipstick. I love both the eyeliners. I like the sponge, but like I said, it was just, it's a little bit too firm. I already forgot what I have on my face. Nude sticks, I would not recommend, especially that set. I did not like the brow gel. I did not like the mascara. I feel like there's potential for the eyeshadow stick with other colors. Cheekbone Beauty, I love the color of the blush. I don't really like the bronzer. I think it was 30 Canadian dollars. I get it, it's a small brand, but I kind of wanted a bit more for that price. Kind of same with the concealer. The concealer was good. It did what it was supposed to do, but again, for that price, I would not spend my money on that million better concealers. Highlighter that's not being sold anymore, so who cares? But honestly, I feel like the one that stole the show was the lipstick. The color's beautiful. It's not drying. It's still, I can still move it around. It's not a liquid lipstick, so again, it's not going into the cracks. Shade, I freaking love. Oh my gosh. I know my mom would love that too. If she watches this video, I have a feeling she's gonna be like, ooh, give me that shade. <laughs> so honestly, the winner out of all of this was Vasanti. Vasanti? Was Vasanti? Vasanti? Vasanti Cosmetics lipstick because that's just gorgeous. If you're in Canada and you never bothered to look into the drugstore makeup section, you probably should. They're cheaper and I kind of like them better than the Sephora Canadian makeup brands. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.